hello again. So, we are talking about the properties of the function space right. So, we took this simple example of a, a taut string and we wanted to know what kind of shapes this taut string will take when you apply different kinds of forces on it right. So, all of those we have to search in order to find one that minimize the potential energy. So, we are talking about that function space here we say what kind of function we said that they need not be continuous like this they can be is they need not be differentiable like this smooth they can be non differentiable like this kinked one which is what happens in this particular case when there is a force like that right. We also said that if you take this particular case there are two wedges that squeeze this wire so that it will have a a discontinuity over here ok. Let me change color. So, we have here a discontinuity right the same x value has a range of values. So, this type of things are also allowed so, things that have discontinuity. So, now our function space consists of what does it contain tomatoes or oranges or apples or what right they are, we, they are not uh, continuous ok they are not differentiable right. So, what any anything can be uh, uh, belong to this function space. So, we can find our uh, answer here that is not true. So, there are some certain properties that you can define. So, that your function space is properly characterized. So, you know where you are searching ok. You are searching in a room you have to know what kind of a room that is ok. So, for that we need to understand what is called uh, a normed vector space ok and some properties of that. We know what a vector space is now. Now, we add a qualifier called normed right. What does it mean? It simply means that along with a vector space there is something called a norm also. Norm is like a metric something that says something about it. If there are some people let us say there is a norm we say if we can measure the height of every person weight of every person let us say then there is a norm ok. You can talk about two different people there and what is the distance between them that is a norm. So, norm is mathematically defined or denoted let us say like this if I take uh, this f of x here. So, uh, when we when we say something is a norm it is it talks about a characteristic of that like height of a person like I said a norm is defined as in a vector space is a real valued function. So, this uh, x that we put like this ok is a norm it should be a real number it should belong to this real number space r. So, you have a function space ok let us call this a function space ok and then we have this real number space right. So, norm takes a function and maps it to a real number we can calculate it that is what is the norm. So, when you have a norm defined for a vector space we get what is called a normed vector space. That norm has to satisfy four properties that are shown here first is that the norm has to be non negative just like metric is metric should be non negative and so is the norm both are the same ok. And if the norm of an element belong to vector space is 0 that means that that element should be a null vector the 0 function in that ok. Similarly, the norm of alpha times x is equal to absolute value of alpha times norm of x and then we have our triangular inequality equivalent here x plus y norm is less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of y ok. There are the four things that uh, a norm has to satisfy. If you want to come up with your own norm, you should make sure that all these 1, 2, 3, 4 properties are satisfied for any two elements or any scalar uh, element that alpha, which belongs to scalar field, uh, should satisfy these four properties. So, now we said already that our function space is like a vector space. So, space of all continuous functions is a vector space it would satisfy those properties and there is a norm for that ok. We can have a normed uh, function space such as this one and you can have differentiable functions ok that uh, we have C 1 uh, continuous. So, we, we, we have not only continuous we can also have say that the derivative is also continuous what you call differentiable and for each of them you can define different 
norms. Okay. There are lot of different norms that you can define for the same uh, space. All right. So, like I said function analysis is the one that covers all these things in detail what you are talking about is only uh, a basic understanding of various terminology in the context of our optimization or calculus of variations. Right? Calculus of variations is optimization over the function spaces we need to understand what role these different terminology uh, are going to uh, have. Okay? So, one of these uh, uh, spaces we say normed vector space. So, we said vector space at a function space that has a norm defined on it. So, something you can say this element that is a characteristic that is a norm. Now, uh, let us talk about something else called Banach space. Right? So, again the motivation for this comes from our um, notion of. So, we said that in this particular case what should be our function space? What kind of thing not continuous, not differentiable, so what? Right? So, for that we want to um, define what is called this uh, Banach space. So, what is the significance of it? This has a lot of significance in uh, calculus of variations. Okay? Let us see the definition first and then come back. This Banach space as you see the definition here it is a complete normed vector space. Okay. So, complete I have underlined. So, we have to understand what we mean by complete. It is a complete normed vector space that is called a Banach space. Right? This completeness there is a, a definition for that also. A normed vector space x is complete if every Cauchy sequence from x has a limit in x. Then you have to say what is Cauchy sequence, what is limit and so forth. Right? A Cauchy sequence is basically a converging sequence that is what is the definition here what it says that you can have a sequence meaning that if you start with a function we talk about function spaces there are also vector spaces right. We have functions if I start with a function and I have something a rule or operation that gives me a next function the next function and next function then I get a sequence of things such a sequence converges such that sequence is called a Cauchy sequence and a convergent sequence will have a limit it will stop somewhere right that limit should belong to that space. If it does then we call such a thing Banach space. Okay? That is what all this mathematics in this slide and this slide, but that you can read leisurely. Uh, what it says is that you have a, a vector space or a function space. Okay? Function space is just one kind of a vector space. Right? You have a function space and uh, that there is a norm also that is you can for every function you can define a characteristic. Now, that function space will be called Banach space if it is complete normed vector space. Complete means that there should be some converging sequences which is called Cauchy sequences and the limit of the sequences should lie within the space such a thing is called a Banach space. Right? And this is important in calculus of variations because we want to find a function that minimizes your objective functional. Right, we understand what a functional now is. Right, we have to minimize that functional. We have to find such a function. So when we search in a space, okay, there are a lot of functions. Now these are not points; these are all functions. Okay, when you have so many functions, if I start a sequence, I choose this one. I call it one. I choose this two. I choose this three. I choose this four, and so forth. So I'll have f 1 and then f 2, f 3 like that let us say there is f n. So, let us say after that how much how many more things I take the value of uh, this will, will there will be a limit in the sense that that kind of function will not be different from f n plus 1, f n plus 2 and so forth. That means that this sequence of functions has converged. Okay, I have f n f n plus 1 they are all identical. So, if I n plus 2 they are all the same let us say almost the same within some tolerance. Right? Such a sequence of functions we call it a converging sequence and the limit of that that uh, this thing what I converge. So, that also should belong to this space if it does such a thing we call Banach space. 
okay. that is a complete normal vector complete meaning that limits of all convergence sequence belongs to that space itself. Why is it important for us? It is important for us in calyx of variations because if I have bracket stochastic problem point uh, A to B I want to find in the presence of gravity a function that minimizes the time which is a cycloid, but before that let us say randomly I take another function. Okay. From there let us say I start my initial guess 1 and that may take me to another function L o and then I am let us say that is uh, uh, second function and then I take some other function I can call it 3 1 2 3 and many more functions finally, I converge to my uh, y star here right after that there is nothing further to go that is the best right. So, this convergence sequence has a lot of role to play in calculus of variations right and that final function should belong to the function space that I originally uh, took to search right. We are searching in a space which should contain our solution that means that somebody asked to search for something in a room the first thing you should ask is do you know for sure that the what I am looking for is in that room right. If it is not there it is a futile search right. So, our optimization or calculus variation we do to minimize the functional we should search in a room called Banaha space ok that is what it means all right. So, we need to have the answer in uh, the room that uh, we are searching it. Okay, that is what it, it, it actually means right. So, there is another space called Hilbert space right. The Hilbert space has a, a different thing what is called here uh, a complete inner product space is called a Hilbert space. What is a Hilbert space? It should be complete inner product. What is inner product? Inner product we can define as shown here right. So, norm we needed element itself x and we put two bars on it saying the norm. Right. So, if I uh, go back here all right, let us go to the next page yeah. So, if I have a function space I have different functions I have f 1 of x let us say f 2 of x and then f 3 of x and so forth. So, all of these are points in that function space. So, for every one of them we can define a norm. A norm can be a norm of a function which we say we have this f 1 we have a norm on it right we you know it can be an integral. So, if the domain is from x 1 to x 2 I can say f 1 of x d x a real number norm should be a real number I can define. So, similarly I can define for f 2 also f 2 norm is x 1 to x 2 f 2 d x right like that I can have a norm. So, as opposed to this which talks about if I take a f 1 norm of f 1 tells me something about f 1 just like in a population a group of people norm can be height of the person right for every person there is a height every person there is a weight those are norms. So, you can take one element of the function space or vector space and talk about norm, but the one that we now talk about which is called the inner product ok inner product that requires two elements that is if I have a function space ok. Let us say there are f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4, f 5 and so forth right. In order to define an inner product I need two things I can define inner product between f 1 and f 2 we put two year brackets that is inner product ok. Like if you have two vectors dot product is like a inner product two vectors meaning our mechanics vectors if I say uh, there is uh, v 1 is a vector normal mechanics vector and there is a v 2 I can put dot product right. So, that dot product is an inner product. If you uh, want to recall, let us say I have uh, v 1 x plus v 1 y j like a two dimensional vector 
we are going to say a dot product v 2 x plus v 2 y if I have you know how to dot product basically v 1 x times v 2 x because i dot with i will be 1 i dotted with j will be 0 and then j dot with i will be 0. J so, we will basically get v 1 x v 2 x plus v 2 uh, v 1 y v 2 y that is a dot product that is the inner product. Okay. It is just that it is defined not for simple vectors such as our mechanics uh, uh, vectors they are defined for these vectors which are functions for functions also you can define inner product. It can be as simple as there will be again four properties for that let us say I can say x 1 to x 2 I can say f 1 times f 2 d x that is inner product it satisfies certain properties which are listed here when you see inner product x plus y z should be equal to x z plus y z and then alpha x times y uh, alpha x and y uh, alpha times x and y should be equal to alpha times x y in a product and then x y should be for when you talk about complex numbers that will be y x also that we do not need when you are dealing with real numbers and then x x is always greater than or equal to 0 means non negative when x x is equal to 0 that is only true if x is equal to the x is the null function there. Okay. There is a relation between inner product and the norm such as this you know when you say inner product of the element with itself then that will be the norm right. Why do we need this inner product when you had a norm I said that is a characteristic like a height of a person or a weight of a person or something like that. What do you need between two people when you want to compare things you need to have what kinds of things to be compared one of the things is uh, the orientation normal mechanics when you say dot product is 0 that means that those two vectors are perpendicular to each other right. So, it talks about that kind of an angle between two vectors similarly for functions also you can talk about inner product space. So, that is the Hilbert space and a uh, this Banaha space and Hil Hilbert space also be complete inner product space meaning that if you take a sequence of things that reaches a limit that limit should belong to the Hilbert space right. So, complete inner product space is a Hilbert space and this Hilbert space and Banaha space are important uh, in our optimization as I said that uh, whatever space we search or a room we search should be a Banaha space. So, Banaha space Hilbert spaces are not particular uh, spaces, but they are kind of category of spaces like we can say Banaha space are vegetables and Hilbert space are fruits right. We are not saying which vegetable we are not saying it is brinjal or uh, lady's finger or uh, some other god, but we are saying all of them are vegetables they are Banaha spaces which have a norm and complete norm vector space. Hilbert spaces has inner product and they are like fruits we are not saying apple, orange or banana, but they are all fruits right. Now, we will talk about a few specific uh, spaces as well such as the one which we have shown Lebesgue space. See Banaha space and Hilbert spaces are generic spaces categories let us say fruits and vegetables that is all these either a fruit or a vegetable if it is a Banaha space it is of one kind. Hilbert space of another kind which satisfies this properties we defined one with the norm other the Hil uh, inner product. When you say Lebesgue space which is important going back to our uh, the string problem what function should we take right that is where we are getting. Now, this Lebesgue space has a particular norm associated with it which is defined here right. The Lebesgue space is contains all these elements V such that a particular norm on it over here right that is norm that we have this v and two bars like this right that norm has a subscript here which is saying l q over some domain right that should be less than infinity we are saying all we are saying is that the Lebesgue norm which is what is defined here the Lebesgue norm should be finite. If you go back to our string problem if you uh, recall. So, we said what kinds of things will be here right not any discontinuous thing, but things where this Lebesgue norm is less than infinity meaning finite. When we apply these forces on the string we do not want this spring uh, the string to go to infinity right it is uh, some kind of energy in it should be finite it should not be indefinitely 
uh, having a lot of strain energy or potential energy right. It should have a finite one and that is what uh, we uh, have here ok. When we say this Lebesgue norm that you should be finite. So, what it is saying is that Lebesgue norm is finite it is saying not infinite less than infinity it is finite right. What is Lebesgue norm? Look at this integral. So, it is integral of the absolute value of v raised to q where q is some number right and integrate that integrate the absolute value of v raised to q and then take the qth root that is a Lebesgue norm right that is kind of some quantity right, but that is not enough for mechanics and q can be 2 that becomes what we call L2 norm like a distance ok like a function f square dx integral integral of f square dx is like what is called L2 norm right this, these are all Lebesgue norms and it will become more clear to you when we talk about a more complicated thing called a Sobolev space which has a, a Sobolev norm ok the Sobolev norm which is a little bit more complicated right it is a there is a summation here over alpha such that its absolute value is less than r ok and then we have a norm which has this d raised to alpha v the d is basically differential operator if alpha equal to 1 it is a first derivative alpha equal to 2 it is second derivative alpha equal to 0 it is a function itself that v itself right. But here we are not saying alpha should be integer even fractional derivatives are allowed which we are not going to get into, but know that fractional derivatives also between you cannot you do not need to have d y by d x and d squared y by d x square you can also have something in between them like derivative 1.3, 1.4 or whatever right. So, it says that all of those if you take and raise it to q and take the norm and sum them all up and take the qth root of it then you get what is called Sobolev norm. Why is it important for us? It looks very abstract. It is important for us because our functionals are going to be containing function and their derivatives that is exactly what this is saying. Whatever we have here what it is saying is that summation of something right. So, function and its derivatives summation can be an integral the norm here already the what we have the norm here that can be an integral need not be the only kind it can be other things we have seen already it is uh, something that sums up the whole function ok. So, this uh, uh, Sobolev space that we, we, we talk about is energy space because most of the strain energy potential energy they all contain the function its first derivative and second derivative and so forth. Normally, in mechanics you do not go beyond second derivative, but uh, you can in principle there are energy spaces where those energies are finite because if you see Lebesgue norm we said that should be less than infinity cannot have infinite strain energy that is why the Sobolev space are important. So, in calculus of variations when we apply to mechanics in our variational methods we should ensure that our functions belong to Sobolev space. By the way Sobolev space is a Banach space that all been proved by Sobolev and others. Sobolev is space is named after a person called Sobolev and so is Lebesgue and, and Banach and so forth it is a Banach space meaning that Sobolev if we call Banach space as a space of vegetables Sobolev space is a particular vegetable that is like let us say a brinjal and Lebesgue space is uh, let us say a snake god right these are particular spaces whereas, Banach space is like a vegetable similarly Hilbert space also there will be several specific spaces can be there ok. Having understood these spaces now let us take another definition of functional before we leave it we said a functional is simply a mapping from a function space which we understand a little bit more than we knew before to a real number space. So, basically this definition says that a function is a transformation from a vector space or a function space. So, when I say vector space here I also mean this to be a function space ok to coefficient field meaning that k that we have right real number ok. Once you understand that functional in that manner basically it should go from functions that belong to certain space which satisfies all this Lebesgue norm or Sobolev norm and so forth to a real number space ok that is what a, a functional does for everything here it takes you there that is a functional. 
normally people sometimes quickly define a functional as function of functions that will be incorrect because if uh, f of x is a function f square okay, which is a function of function that is not a functional right, but a functional should take a function to a real number, real number space that is what is a functional. Once talk about a functional we understand and uh, we can talk about linear function that is like we have we, once we understand function we can talk about this linear function, nonlinear function what is a linear functional something that satisfies this. Okay. J if I say j of x is a functional j of y is another functional if j of x plus j of y is equal to j of x plus y then it is a linear functional. Similarly, j of alpha x is equal to times j of x then that is a linear function both of them can be put together in this fashion here j of alpha times x plus beta times y should be equal to alpha times j, j of x plus beta times j of y then such a functional j we call it a linear functional. Okay. And bounded functional where that is bounded by a number c times the norm of that function. Okay. So, that is a bound that is also important for us in calculus variations whenever we take a functional which you want to minimize you want it to be bounded you do not want it to go to infinity indefinitely that will cause problems. So, we need to have bounded functionals and finally, we need continuous functionals as well we know what continuous functions are right a function that has a value if you put up a little bit here there will be uh, so every function will have what we call a domain and a range right this is the input that is output if i have some here there is a corresponding thing there now if i put up a little bit in the domain the range should not be going over there it should be somewhere close by if there is a epsilon here there should be distance within delta okay if this is epsilon is around that point if i am there that should be there that's a continuous one right so Similarly, for function also we can talk about something called a continuous functional with the same uh, kind of uh, uh, notion that we have right. So, if I have uh, a functional j is said to be continuous at x in d in open set all those qualifications exist open set and all that right. Uh, if j has a limit j of x at x or symbolically as y tends to x a little perturbed point in the domain then j of y should tend to j of x. So, in the domain if they are tending to each other in the range also they should such a thing is called a continuous functional. Okay. So, uh, to uh, summarize today let us show here uh, let us just yeah a few things that we talked about we talked about what is called a functional and we defined matrix spaces and vector spaces vector space will have a scalar field associated with it and it needs vector addition two of them two vectors elements of that you will be able to add following some rules and also scalar multiplication meaning that something that belongs to the scalar field which we called k something that belongs to vector space you know I can just call it capital X I should be able to add two elements of x that is a vector addition I will multiply a number belonging to k with x right. So, we discussed this vector space and then we talked about norm and then we said normed vector space is called Banaha space normed vector space right a complete normed vector space right. So, in that sense all the converging sequences should belong to that that is our Banaha space we also talked about inner product and uh, complete inner product space is called Hilbert space and these are generic categories of uh, spaces okay. 
which is Banach is especially important because whatever initial guess we start with a function when you generate a sequence of things iterative optimization the limit or converging function should be within that space. Okay. Again remember when you are searching in a room at the end of the search you should still be in the room not outside that is Banach space. Hilbert space talks about relations whether things are perpendicular or uh, not uh, aligned and things like that. Okay. That we do not need so much in optimization that we are going to talk about Banach space is an important uh, thing and then we also talked about uh, Lebesgue space and uh, Sobolev space okay, which are important things in terms of mechanics because both of these especially Sobolev space they are called energy spaces okay, or we can call finite energy spaces right because we saw that should be less than infinity okay like the string problem you cannot have indefinitely infinite energy it needs to have finite energy then all such functions which give rise to finite finite energy uh, are the ones that you should be searching okay with these preliminaries we'll jump into calculus of variations in the next lecture thank you